All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Millspec Ops Monkey here. Listen, uh, I've been asked to do this uh, many, many times, and uh, today I'm just taking a little bit of time to pull this together. Uh, you were watching it Friday, pre recorded, okay, just so you know. Um, but this is going to be Skyglass 101, and it's just going to give you the introductory level of how to navigate within this tool set. If you don't have it, let's hop on over here to the board real fast. Uh, if you don't have it, you can go out there, go to avrlabs.com. Uh, you can pull it right up. It'll it'll pop in, and you'll see this exact screen, okay? Then you go over here to Skyglass app, do the drop-down, hit Downloads. It's going to give you two options. You can download it for Mac. You can download it for Windows. Now, when he comes out with a new variation, he will actually send you a, a, a nice little email saying, hey, we just upgraded and loaded some new, new data uh, to a new version. Uh, to load those new versions, you actually have to go in and uninstall one and then reinstall this one. So you'll go back out, do the download. It comes in a nice little clean zip file and you're off to the races, okay? Now, once you have done that, let's assume you already have Skyglass loaded. You're just trying to figure out how to use it, what it all means, okay? Notice I don't have any airplanes on my map right now. I'm keeping it uh, at a very high level. We're gonna load those in. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that, okay? Now, if you get over here, up here in the left corner, it's gonna give you a timestamp. So you can see it is 8-7-2022 and it's 7.05 UTC, uh, universal time, all right? So, um, and then it gives you kind of scattered clouds, winds, knots, directions, all that different kind of stuff that's out there, cloud cover, visibility, based on your location that, that I have selected on the map right now, okay? But, I'm paying attention to that part doesn't uh, it's nice to know nice to have so if you see the 8 7 2022 you know that last sunday i was actually making this video for you okay so like i said it is not live all right now um this is your basic map look okay if we look at this behind me uh right up here this is going to be uh your your menu so to speak if you start here on the far right and work your way down this bottom one that is green if i click on that that menu goes away okay so say i've got everything i want situated and i'm looking at flights and i don't want that taking up the corner box you just click on that it goes away you go above it that's going to be your login your profile your menu panel um, then you got your settings uh, that you can go in and select what uh, particular one you're looking at so if you have an antenna on your house and uh, and you want to look at that general uh, network versus the ADSB pool that comes in from the big picture, um, you just basically select one of these and it'll actually load it right in uh, your uh, Anywhere ID. And then you're just looking at it from a local regional perspective based on your input. So why, uh, why is that important? Remember, uh, Sky Glass is actually crowdfunded, crowdsourced, right? So it is reading ADSB and MLAT antennas all around the world with users just like me. I've got a, uh, an antenna on my house uh, and I feed the database, okay? And that makes it different because if you look at ones like FlightAware, these are big commercial companies. Uh, they have to adhere to the FAA uh, criteria. So if somebody has an aircraft that is masked and they don't want it shown, FAA through FlightAware and the other FAA type of downloads, um, they hide it, they mask it, and you can't see it. Skyglass does not do that because he's not mandated by the FAA on his uh, search criteria. So we can actually go in there and select, uh, you know, any kind of aircraft and, and pull the data on it for the most part. Now, there are some some pretty heavy ones that are in a no matter how you look at them. But for the most part, you will see things in this app that you don't see in other apps. OK. All right. Let's go on through the menu. Uh, this right here, this airplane icon, when you select that, it is going to load all the airplanes that you have selected. Um, this currently is set up for military only. That's what this is. If we go just to the left. So as long as I have that selected and I hit this button, it's going to now take and populate every military aircraft that's in the air right now around the world. And it's going to load them. Okay. Now there are ones you still won't see like fighters. They're very hard to, very hard to find. They typically don't show their location. You get over to Europe, they'll squawk sometimes where you can actually see them. Uh, but for the most part, they got that transponder and squawk set to something different where we can't watch what they're doing uh, for national security reasons, right? Now, uh, notice right now we're looking at, uh, it gives you a number up here. Uh, last load was 275. Right now we're showing 157. And of that, 157 military. Okay, zero mass because I don't have that selected. Um, but 
I'll show you. We will select that. I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay. So that's the military. If you click on that, it gives you different options of different aircraft types, commercial, military, mast, emergency. That's what these icons are. That's the emergency one. That's your mask one. Think of it like a spy. Got the little bucket hat on. Uh, military, commercial. Okay. These right here are basically what you look at to tell you the descriptive, okay, for that particular aircraft. So if I unselect that, all I can see now are aircraft icons. If I turn off the icon aircraft uh, button, all you see are these little arrows, and it kind of makes you wonder, what are, what are these little arrows flowing everywhere? Now, I'll just show you what these actually mean, uh, but if you see the red, the red means it is descending. If you see the blue, that light blue color right here, that means it's level. It's flying level and if you see green that means it's actually climbing okay just real basic now I leave the icons on because I like to kind of get a general idea of what I'm looking at here aircraft wise now I will tell you there are a couple icons in this that aren't completely accurate uh, and Skyglass is actually working on those this one for example is a C-130 that is a P P3 Orion icon okay so there's a couple things that they're gonna have to fix uh, that are still out there but for the most part you know, you can if you can see what they're being called out because of the tab, I uh, like this, then you know what you're looking at. Okay. Um, now here's the other piece too. You can actually build onto that, but if you do it, it's going to be very chunky, and you're going to have a, a lot of big black box all over your, um, all over your screen. So I typically only show the call signs. If I need to get into really the details of it, uh, I could click on that, but I don't. And this one here gives you altitude and elevation, uh, and heading. Uh, just additional data if you're only tracking a handful of aircraft then you may want all of that stuff loaded but if you don't and you're you're just looking at big picture and you want to kind of look at low-hanging fruit then you just select that one right here and that would basically turn on uh, kind of your 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 baseline identification okay um, this icon right here is going to be your traces so if you have that selected it'll actually hold the trace as you as you go onto an aircraft and you you select it it'll load that trace line. See the trace line right here? And so that's what that does. If I turn that off, that trace line goes away. Okay. All right. Now we go down here to the other ones, the tabs. This is going to be how often your, your thing refreshes. If you want it to auto refresh, you can do so through that button. This stops and freezes everything. Let's say, for example, you accidentally select a commercial aircraft and then uh, you hit that little round load button up here for the aircraft. Uh, that aircraft icon and all of a sudden it's loading 25,000 airplanes across your screen and you can just see it slowly building across the United States that is a massive load to try and populate you can do it I don't do it because it is a time consumer and a data consumer um, and I usually have a lot of different tabs open and I, I, I need to have all of the RAM and everything else I can get to really show all of this okay now that's the first piece uh, that's the stop you would hit lock it up and then this is the burn so let's say i hit stop and then i hit burn once it's uh it's going to tell you all right we're stopped we stopped loading now i hit the burn and it clears my screen everything goes away okay and so you basically restart from scratch now um this little slider right here basically uh controls your mouse speed uh, and your zoom levels um and then there's this slider right here on the far side that'll actually take you above ground elevation uh, not totally important right now you want to just kind of keep that at the middle range uh, but when you see aircraft at different elevations they really stand out if you've got that selected properly and then all of a sudden you notice oh that's a military intelligence balloon at 90,000 feet okay so let's uh, we're gonna hide that slider and I recommend you hide it once you get it set because if you don't you bump it it'll change everything your mouse settings and, and your screen will just be flying all over the place I typically button that up once I get it set. Now this is going to be your map callouts. You have eight different types of maps you can select. Um, if you want to do just a dark screen, uh, kind of like Sky Glass shows a lot, uh, you basically just select. Uh, uh, let's see. We'll go to this one here, and it'll it'll change your map type, right? And as you can see now, the U.S. is all blacked out. You can still see the states. Uh, you can still see the bodies of water named and things like that, but it just changes it. Um, and once you select the one that you want to look at and you want to leave it at that, just hit that little map uh, icon and button it back up. Keeps it nice and tight. And then that way you've got um, 
uh, you know, a lot more screen to look at. Okay. All right. So we talked about that one. Uh, this is actually going to be a reset on your camera and rotation locations. That's if things get really squirrely and you need to just kind of call it back home. Just leave that. I don't mess with that uh, at all. And then right here behind me, uh, you can see uh, you got Conus. That's the Conus and the Europe callouts. You can add to your favorites. So if you decide, hey, I want to put Texas on there, you just right, you know, click it and then load Texas, and it'll give you another location. These are quick bounce. Uh, what what I like to use. If you don't like them, you want to add your own. You can delete them and add them right here. Okay. Uh, but if you click on it like Europe, it's going to just instantly take you straight over to Central Europe. And then you can see everything here uh, down below. Again, I don't have any aircraft loaded yet. OK, we're going to come back to that. Uh, but that kind of gives you a general feel of how to navigate across. All right. Everything else is through mouse um, on your mouse pad or on your mouse. Uh, I have a little just a standard mouse, wireless mouse. It's got a little scroll on the middle. I can I can push in, push out. That'll actually allow me to zoom in, zoom out. Um, if I right click and hold it down, I can tilt it down sideways. I can move around from that aspect. And if I uh, left click the mouse, I can drag it and pull my screen across. Uh, again, it gives you a little more cinematic look to everything. Okay. So we've talked about those. We've got the sliders. We're kind of now up to speed. This is your map zoom. If you want to uh, look at things at a little closer level. You can actually also zoom from here and then this up here is your trace depth and by depth what he's basically saying is uh, You can select all the way back to two minutes and you'll have a very short trace line I like 24 hours because I do my sit reps every two days And so I like to see what I've missed the day before if I haven't been on here um, I'm usually on it every every single day looking up stuff and trying to find those little hidden nuggets um, but uh, but yeah, I put my trace line at 24 hours. Now, what that does when I load the traces, it basically tracks that aircraft every five in five second increments all the way for the last 24 hours. Uh, it's quite a draw onto your um, and onto your software, but and your computer if you don't have the right RAM and things like that, it may take a little longer. Um, but mine's it's 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 relatively quick all the way through. So okay. So we've talked about the nav board behind me, and now we're just going to try to figure out what we want to look at from an aircraft perspective. Now, like I said, if you click on this shield, that is military only. Uh, this one right down below it is going to be uh, your aircraft database. So that is a, a database of about half a million airplanes worldwide that loads. So when you first click on it, you're going to get a little red bar right back here behind my, uh, on my shoulder. That'll start to load. You'll give that a couple minutes. It takes about three or four minutes for it to, to basically refresh and load all of that new data. But um, but that's how you do it. You basically just populate that, load it. The first time you load it, it'll take a minute. But once you're done, you're done uh, until you log in the next time. So, uh, But this is, this is how you basically, if you want to go out and search for particular aircraft or aircraft types, you can do so. So if I say, for example, I want to look for Q4 drones, right? That's not going to be by owner operator or by registration, which would be like an N number or by ICAO because it is an aircraft type. And so the ICAO is the hex code. So I'm knowing the Q4 is going to be by type. So I would select type. I'm doing it, going to do a partial load. That'll require me to really look at the list once it comes out. And I hit search and it's basically going to populate. Now notice mine are already all green. That's because I've already done this. It's going to pull up every Q4 drone in the world, Q9s, Q4s, whatever you want to search on. This is Q4s. It's going to give me every Q4 drone. So anytime one of these get airborne, if I save it to my watch list, it's going to track it for me. Okay. So let's uh, uh, say, for example, you, you liked everything you saw there and you're like, oh, I want to add that to my watch list. You literally just go right over here to this, hit that button. Um, I would actually, I, I would label it Q4 right right here and then you just hit save and it's actually going to create a database in your watch list of nothing but the q4s already pre-loaded um, and so to add or take away from that list you all you do is just select this little flag looking thing and uh, it'll go away or it'll add to it green means it's there white means it's not okay so that's how you find and search through the database uh, that information now let's go ahead i'm going to load um, and I'm going to close out 
that's my database. I'm going to trash the database, take it away, uh, close that out. Now, like I said, we're right now we're just going to look at the military aircraft. I've got this selected for mil only, and uh, I'm not I'm lo not looking at anything else, um, commercial, mast, anything. It's just military only. All you do, you select that little icon right there, and then you're going to hit that airplane icon, and it's going to start loading your military. You'll see right here behind me. Uh, uh, well, you can't really see it too well, but there's a red little weight line that, that pops on telling you it's loading, it's thinking, you know. So when that little red box pops up down in that lower right-hand corner, just sit tight. It'll take about 30 seconds at, at most and load it. Now, remember I was talking elevations, how you can tell uh, aircraft that are higher than others all by that slider bar, okay? That would be this. Here's your uh, Zulu 82. Now, notice up here on the top, it's got the it's got the call sign it's got the aircraft types got the altitude this little window that's up here at the top gives you all the pertinent data around that particular aircraft okay now that little box right here that is the database box so when i click on that if it's not a military bird it'll actually tell me who the operator owner is for that okay that comes in handy i usually select it just to hang on to it um, just like my large database i'll leave that out all right, but this gives you right now, this is all the airplanes that are up. It'll tell you here, uh, last load, I was 254. It right now is showing 144 and 144 mil aircraft. Okay, so it gives you the numbers. Average is about 250. Okay, so let's say it loaded that and you thought, huh, I want to sort this. I don't want to look at all the trainers, um, all the text twos. Okay, so how do you fix that? Well, this next little icon section we're looking at here, this is going to be your list. It's going to be your watch list. Don't load your watch list for that if you can help it. Just load the list. It's going to pop this up. I'm going to hit a refresh on that same data just so that it re-wickers all of my list over here. All right, now you'll see my list, okay? That tells you how many of that aircraft type are in the air right now, all right? Now, if I decided I don't want to go by highest number because notice TEX-2 T-38s are going to be my two highest. Then you got the NA. Those are going to be your mast. Uh, as your next I typically load these by aircraft type and not quantity personal preference whatever you like so say for example you loaded up aircraft and you go you know what I only want to look at the um, G5s that are flying right now the minute you select that it's gonna clear everything else out on your screen and all you're gonna be seeing are the are those G5s okay if I want to do C-130 I select that so I'm gonna show me C-130s notice it doesn't show the traces in order to get your traces to show, you go right here to this little trace icon and it will load those traces. Now remember, I've got mine set for 24 hour. So that trace line is every five seconds for the amount of time over the last 24 hours the thing, thing has been flying. Also, if you wanna change the color of your trace line, say for example, I'm looking at C-130s, I want them yellow, but now I wanna look at C-17s, but I don't want them yellow the same as the other ones. Now it's gonna load right now the yellow, but let's say I want to change that. Okay, you can see still shows you yellow, pretty nice on the eyes, easy to see on the map. There's a little bit of blue in there, but let's do this. You go down to that little rainbow box below the particular aircraft call out, and you say on the start line, I want to make it uh, red, and on the finish line, um, I'm going to go this color. All right, and now that's going to change it. Once I hit the select, or say I want to, I want to look at a blue instead right so for my start I go blue for my finish I go blue now I've just changed the color of that line I button it up and now you can see uh, I, I can tell just by a visual look and appearance that my yellows are C-130s and my teal uh, blue looking color are gonna be my C-17 so that's how you do that and it's pretty cool and you can tell where they've been that's how you come up with your kind of that trend analysis you realize Oh, wait a minute, man. There's a lot of activity happening right now on the East Coast or the West Coast or a particular city. All right. Now, let's say, for example, I don't want to look at these and just back them out. You just click them out and it takes away the lines, takes away everything, and you're back to where you were. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, um, I had a P3 that I wanted to trace. Uh, and this is it. It's, a, it's an NA aircraft, right? It's just kind of hiding itself. Uh, but it's the only one I got on there. Now, if I click on this, uh, it's going to take me straight over to that aircraft location when you click on that, okay? Now, 
notice there is a uh, so we're looking at this I'm not looking at the lines I don't have anything really selected for that airplane yet to show the trace line I'll basically just go back into that P3 select that little trace line and then I can just button that back down now I am tracking all P8s all P3s so I thought now I just recognize I've got a P3 that's flying right now that's not on my watch list how do I add it to the watch list simple you literally click this button right here and it's going to take it and load it onto your watch list now the key to that you're going to have to actually go into your watch list and I'll show you how to do that in a minute and recategorize it um, but it will hold it and save it okay so now I've got this one added to my watch list now you see the little door right here above it for military wise it's not super important but if I were to click on that okay it says to proceed you must load the master database this will take about a minute I hit okay we're down so now right here uh, above my head you see that little thin lines because my screen cuts it off but it actually tells you just wait it's thinking give it a second and now it's loading uh, everything it's in that master database into that particular field that feels important because when I go to look at mass aircraft it'll tell me who owns and operates those aircraft and the details behind it okay now notice up here it's not showing uh, as being saved to the master watch list yet that will refresh itself once I'm once I'm out of it okay so let's do this um, go ahead just to make sure I got it I'm gonna select it so now I know actually you know what I think it deselected it there we go now it is part of my watch list all right so we're gonna back away from the p3s let me expand this and now we're just gonna go back now look notice here it tells you every aircraft that's up right now um, it doesn't give you all the pertinent details just yet on these uh, that your watch list would give you if I were to load these into and save them as my watch list now you don't want to do that because it'll eat up all your data and your your bandwidth and everything else but um, but let's do this too. notice the chunkiness right see how uh, it's got the call outs if I want to take those away I go right here to this little um, tag and I take them off all right and now they're gone um, I can also take away the airplane icons and again uh, now what you're looking at as you see the colors and the arrows reds descending greens climbing blue is level at altitude but uh, I like to look at my icons so I can tell what it is not just some little arrow and I like to give it a tag so I know what kind of aircraft I'm looking at because not all the icons actually match exactly what they should be all right for example C-130 is still showing as a P-3 Navy icon which we know that's not correct uh, here's a perfect example of that right here notice this one it's a C-130J but that is a P-3 Orion icon we know that's not accurate so uh, but he uh, will be going back in and fixing a couple little things like that as we find them uh, again this thing has grown tremendously it's an amazing database and, and uh, like I said the sky is the limit no pun intended so all right now let's take this down let's uh, take away our watch list so what I'll do is I'll unselect the watch list I'm gonna go to stop and that's gonna freeze everything from loading so if there was anything that was on a, a you know regen it'll take it away and I'm gonna hit burn okay and then that's gonna clear my screen so everything will go away again okay now we're talking about military from a watch perspective I have other aircraft besides military that load into my watch list if I don't select the proper stuff here above and in uh, other words all of them when I load my watch list it won't pull those in so if you're gonna load your watch list and you've got commercial or mass aircraft in that watch list unless you select these it will not pull them in so it's already got military I just selected commercial and now I'm going to that watch that mask and I leave the emergency one on because those are always onesie twosies then the next thing you do is you just basically go over here to your watch list and select it now if you don't have a watch list loaded yet I'll show you how to do that uh, but say for example you were loading those Q4s that I showed you you know hey I want to make this my watch list now this is going across that database it's pulling everything and everything I mean uh, like here for example that right there um, remember I said it's important that you load that little database because it'll tell you who you're looking at when you get it outside of the military side this is how you know who you're looking at okay so if I select this one that 162 JC gives me the name Jim Carrey all right so there is Jim Carrey flying this one's Mark Cuban 
uh, and that's his aircraft tail number. You can see it loads it right there in the database. That is just one of those nice little features. If you're looking at those aircraft, uh, again, you select that little door, you select that database, and it'll it'll pull in that uh, that owner operator. Same thing with these because they fly under the commercial umbrella. Uh, Department of Homeland Security flies under that blue icon uh, right here. Right, you won't see those on your regular stuff. Uh, right here, this little BE-20, that's one of your NOAA weather modification birds. Now, notice right now it's not showing the traces. I'm gonna click on that, and that will load the trace for me. And then you're gonna notice it's running back and forth. That's seeding, they're, they're out cloud seeding. Uh, that's what they're doing. So, uh, nonetheless, you can see it, you can see the climb out, you can see its descent. Uh, then there's other aircraft out there. You got SPAR, uh, SPAR 12. Uh, that's on our list probably because that was spar 19 with with uh, with the uh, drunk goat right so um, looks like that aircraft is taking her back home to Sacramento or whatever but it looks to be leaving the DC area uh, actually no <laughs> leaving the Chicago area so whoever was with her uh, just got taken home and then plane is headed out okay so these are my watch list and um, let's say for example that you want to go search the database or you just want to look at particular aircraft so I'm gonna clear my list and we're gonna look at mass only alright so to take away all the little stuff that's pre-existing out there you can hit stop you can hit clear okay and it's just gonna do a clean burn you'll see those planes disappear on you and um, it's still thinking alright there they go now I'm gonna go look at just the mast aircraft so I've deselected everything else on here except for the mast Okay, now uh, take away my my watch list. I'm just gonna hit, let's hit that burn button here and see, or I say the burn, the aircraft load. Look at the amount of mass aircraft. That's a lot of airplanes, folks. That's people that don't wanna be tracked. They don't, wanna, they don't want you to know where they're coming and going from. Uh, notice that uh, it, they, some of them kind of faded away, disappeared. That's okay. We're gonna get all of that back here in just a second. I'm gonna back up. Look at the amount of mass aircraft. It's incredible. So. We've loaded the mast. Uh, now I'm going to take the list. Uh, I want to hide my watch list. So we'll make that disappear. I've got this loaded by quantity. So that you can see that Faith aircraft right there is a, is a top flyer. The Golf 5, the G5s are number two. Now if I want to go look at just the G5s, um, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select G5, which is a Gulfstream airplane and let me again my watch list is uh, still trying to hang out over here I don't want it there I've already told it to go away so sometimes you got to be a little persistent um, but here's your G5 22 G5 is up right now remember if I hit that door I can look at because I've selected that door and the database is already loaded I can see who the owner operator is just on those aircraft okay so I've done that and notice as you go through you're gonna know there's Jim Carrey right there Okay, and so if you see one you want to add to your database or your watch list, you literally just select, hit the little, the little flag there. It'll load them into your database. And this is how you find. You can basically load those aircraft by aircraft type uh, and just kind of pour through them, and you'll find, uh, you know, different owners, different people you're tracking. So there's Mark Cuban. There's Jim Carrey. Um, actually, sorry, that's Bill Gates. That one right there, Bill Gates is flying. So that'll take me to Bill Gates. Let's see where he is located. Um, right here uh, let's see who is that yeah that's Bill Gates over ah, down near South America he's over Barbados that general area as you can see this will actually give you exact locations <laughs> right here kind of cool so uh, but yeah that's how you do it that's how you can find people that are don't want to be tracked he doesn't want to be tracked why it's purple but because of this system I have the ability to go in and look at it okay all right, so now let's say we did that. Um, let's say we had our watch list loaded. I'm gonna hide this list. I'm only gonna, a matter of fact, I'm gonna clean burn this because there's a lot of aircraft on there. Uh, and we're just gonna load our watch list. And I'm gonna show you how you basically go in and clean that up and put them into categories if you wanna change them, okay? So we've now cleared everything. I'm gonna go back in, we're gonna select military. I'll select all of them. Uh, actually, I'll leave the mass. No, we're just gonna do military let's do it that way I'll keep it clean and simple all right so military only we're gonna hit that button again it's gonna load the military ones 
All right, and then I'm gonna say, I wanna add my watch list to it. So I select my watch list, it's gonna pull that in. And then um, as it's loading my watch list, give it a minute, as it's thinking, you can see right here, uh, that little thin red line that just disappeared. That was loading uh, everything on my watch list as well as what's up and flying right now. So um, I want to take a look at my database. All right, now say for example, this P3, we just identified that, notice it's still in the air, it's showing us flying. There's a totally different set of icons up here that coincide with the stuff that you look at over here on the right. Um, and some of it is kind of an act alone, uh, kind of a hot button for you, okay? So if I wanted to add an aircraft by its hex code, which is a unique identifier, I just literally hit that little plus up, I'd load what I wanted to my, to my list, and then I'd hit save on it and it would actually load it in. Now this P3 is uncategorized or unassigned, right? So to change that, um, I can see it's a P3. I literally go to this little pencil. I drop, do my drop down. I'm gonna go down here to my P3s and my P8s right here. And that's gonna load it. I hit save. It takes that out on my unassigned and it now loads it down there with all of my, my Navy sub hunters, okay? It's, uh, like I said, this database is pretty amazing. It is um, pretty forgiving too. You can actually go through, if you say you selected something on weather mods and as you got a closer look, you're like, ah, I didn't really wanna track that aircraft. You just basically go in, hit that little cone thing and it um, takes it off your list. All right, so, okay. That is gonna get you just kind of the basics. Now, if you wanna save your list, uh, these two folders right here, you'd actually just select this little red folder right here, it would export you select the location you want to load it and you save it as whatever name you call it. I usually just do a date on mine so I know I've got the latest and greatest. And then you can share that. It's a JSON file, but uh, but you can share that with other people and they can basically download it right into this. If I want to upload or download, you just use these two. If I want to clear one and get rid of a of my list, hit that burn button and your watch list goes away. So um, if you select this little airplane right here, It'll only pull from your watch list the aircraft that are in the air at this time, okay? Uh, if you hit this little button right here that has a little, uh, looks like a, a dartboard um, thing, that'll actually tell you, based on all the aircraft you're watching on your list or your watch list, either one, it'll tell you the last known location for that aircraft. And so you can see this P3, it's uh, Greenwood, California, is where it was located last, all right? And now, of course, we know it's on the west coast or east coast sorry so that's what that stands for this is a uh, basically a refresh button that'll just keep your your watch list circulating kind of flowing in and out as ones drop off other ones come on it'll just keep that um, and then this one here is actually if you want to download and add an aircraft to that watch list or update it just click on that so again uh, I know I threw a lot of data at you go back and watch it stop it pause it uh, uh, but once you get comfortable in all of that, uh, it's, you're going to be the things, like I said, best thing since sliced bread. You can actually just go in, look at your watch list and take you all around the world based on those aircraft and their locations. And, um, and you can actually get into the database, which is this one and look up all kinds of crazy stuff. So if I want to go in here and look up, say, I want to say Mark Wahlberg and I want to see where he is. I go over here to owner operator. I'm going to hit search. Actually, let me hit clear first. Then I'll hit search. Uh, give me zero returns. So let me go to registration, search. Um, now, I know he's got an airplane, uh, but it's not wanting to pull it. So let's go Let's go to Bill Gates, and we'll check. Uh, we're going to clear first. Wipe out that little Q4. Uh, registration, that it would be owner-operator, I think. And there you go. And so that is how easy it is to go and find stuff. And you can see that pulls up both the Bill Gates aircraft. So you can track him anywhere he goes. Um, lots and lots of celebrity ones on here. Um, I would be real careful at doxing people and, and like uh, I've got Elon Musk in here and things like that. And I know he gets butt hurt level Bravo if we show his airplane and where he's going. I try not to do that. It's just a courtesy, you know. Um, and there are other ones too. You got to be real careful if you're tracking them and you're sharing them because you don't know who is in that airplane. So uh, there, there are uh, Mexican G5s and G6s I see going across our border back and forth on a regular basis. 
more than likely that's cartel <laughs> or somebody you don't want tracking or knowing that you're tracking. So I stay away from them. It's just kind of a common sense approach, right? Uh, but let's get rid of the Bill Gates piece. Let's say, for example, you wanted to look at weather uh, and you would sit by owner operator. I'm going to clear the search and we're going to pull it in. And it's basically from an owner operator perspective, it's going to give you anybody that's got that partial search in here from a weather modification. If I go to registration instead of owner operator, I hit clear, I hit weather and uh, give it a second. Uh, it'll tell you no returns. All right. Type ICO. So that owner operator really should be should be giving me a bigger search criteria. It didn't. But that's how you do it. It's just simple as that. And then if you see one you like and you want to add it to your list, you just literally click the icon. Uh, if you click on this, um, once you're in there, you can actually just fast track straight to once it's in your watch list and you say, hey, you know what? I want to go find, let's see, which other ones? We got some command staff out. So there's going to be uh, your little SAM flights, right? I want to go track a SAM flight. I can do that. I can select here and it'll give me the trace. And so you can see that trace is kind of standing out over everybody else's. Uh, but simple as that. Pretty easy to navigate once you get your stuff established uh, and loaded. So, okay. I hope that was helpful. I know I covered a lot in 30 minutes, but I just wanted to give you a baseline. Um, and then we're going to build on these as we go and show you how to do all the other stuff like historical searches. Uh, go back and look at different, different aircraft types, different owners, different things see what they've been up to, where they've been. Uh, like I said, it's a very cool database. I hope you download it. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So that's it, you guys. Listen, hope you have a blessed weekend. Uh, again, I'll be back on Monday with the next sit rep. And um, in the meantime, stay frosty. Keep that powder dry. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.